All right, it's day six. So as you can see, there's not a huge amount of change. Uh, the buds continue to get bigger. Uh, this one in particular is developing very quickly. There's a small one coming along here and one here. You know, in the usual places for the usual suspects. This cross section here has a nice bud developing here. It's at a high point. So let me demonstrate for you. So basically that's the high point for this cross section. And if you look at this, you know, I expect a bud to develop somewhere around here, if I'm right. And for this piece, either here or here. So that's how I'm guessing things will turn out. It could be that both this piece and this piece may never germinate, but I'm thinking they will at some point. If you look at this cross section and this cross section, there's really no reason I can think of that they wouldn't germinate because these roots represent vast storage sections of energy. You know, it has everything these ginger plants need to start growing. So there's really no reason why this much energy should not be able to generate a plant. These ginger roots are full of stem cells that can differentiate into shoot systems that go upwards and root systems that go downwards. Okay, it's day 8 of my ginger germination experiment. And as you can see, there are some exciting new developments. This bud is very large. Uh, this one was here before, but it's still small. And you can see a little bit of green here in this bud. So, likewise, this is probably the most green. And that's a great development. So these buds are differentiating stem cells that are generating these shoot apical meristems. These will become the shoot systems that have leaves and stems and petioles of these plants. And that qu hasn't quite happened in this plant, although it is developing and that bud is quite large. So for this cross section, I can't really tell what's going on in terms of uh, is it going to develop a shoot apical meristem or buds, you know, at any point. I was thinking the high points here and here should have something. But since this is a cut from the original root in kind of the center, it probably takes the longest amount of time to establish the proper, you know, up-down hormone gradients with respect to uh, gravity to start germinating. And likewise, uh, well, this one had a bud originally, and we saw that earlier, and this is uh, green too. So I think having sunlight and this uh, aluminum foil reflector have definitely helped this entire process. I learned this from my honeydew germination experiment. As with my honeydew experiment, we have mold problems to deal with, and there's a little bit of you know, what I think is black mold growing there on the outside of the ginger skin. This is a fairly common problem for ginger roots if you place them out here too long. I don't think that spot even really gets water. It's just that it doesn't get exposure to as much sun, I think. So perhaps that's one of the reasons it's molding. And you know, there's kind of this uh, soup developing at the bottom, which is a little colored uh, brown. And it used to be kind of a pale white. You know, I don't know what's going on. Maybe bacteria or mold will start growing, but I assume that for these ginger roots, this is all part of the natural development process. So if I were to bury these ginger root pieces in soil, I would assume that there would be mold problems anyway, probably a lot more severe. And this is all just part of the natural process. I can try spraying some Lysol like I did in the honeydew germination experiment to kill pathogens. Okay, it's day nine. And as you can see, there's a little bit more growth. These buds are very prominent now. So I sprayed some Lysol this morning on the ginger root sections in hopes of killing all potential molds and any other microorganisms that are trying to feed on these ginger roots. So basically I use this on my honeydew plants. Uh, do a search for honeydew growing or how to grow honeydew etc on my YouTube channel and you'll find all these honeydew growing videos. In the honeydew series, I use Lysol very effectively to kill mold or hold it at bay. Lysol eventually loses its potency over you know, a few days, so mold will continuously grow as long as you have a substrate that's wet, whether it be soil or these ginger roots. 
So for example, going back to this black mold spot, I want to keep things like that at bay. And there's really no way you can ever entirely get rid of mold because there are mold spores in the air that will continuously inoculate whatever substrate you have, be it a root that's moist like this, or a bunch of soil in which you're uh, growing your potted plants. So basically there's continuous mold growth because you're always spraying water. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean there's no mold or other fungal growth. There always is. Ginger roots are very nutritious and have a lot of stored energy in them. And that's why if you leave ginger roots out or leave them in a cupboard for a long period of time, they'll start growing mold. Okay, it's day 10. And as you can see, there's a little bit more greening in these buds. So this bud is maturing and it's already starting to photosynthesize and generate its own food independent of this root. This one shows some green too. Uh, not so much on this root. Uh, there's definitely a lot of maturity in this one as well. And this bud is also starting to green as well. There's still no sign of activity from here. And this root section also doesn't have any activity. So that kind of worries me, but you know, we'll just let these sit and in soil later on if necessary if I do the transplant soon. As for this root section, you know, it appears the middle, I don't know what you would call this, the pith or whatever, it's kind of sagging in. The reason it looks damp now is because I've been spraying everything with water. So I can do, do a demonstration with the water spraying right now. And there's still a lot of residual Lysol in this bowl and on these roots so that should prevent all forms of fungal growth and bacterial growth for now. So as you can see after this spraying there's been some bubbling that's literally the detergent in the Lysol. So as you can see there's sort of a ginger soup going on with these cloudy particulates. Um, you know it's kind of a milky white I would say, uh, slightly tan maybe and I think that's essentially just bits of ginger flaking off or the solutes within these ginger roots dissolving into the water and essentially creating a soup at room temperature.